Welcome to another installment of I Know a Guy Bicycles, hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin, the guy. So today we're going to do a little quick introduction. I'm just going to cover basically a little bit of the frame cleaning preparations that I've done before, but I'm just going to basically focus my conversation on Le Mans bikes and where they came from and where are they now and what do you see on the market and like what's a Le Mans bike? So, so back in the day, um, Le Mans... Well, Greg, Greg LeMond is the original guy, Greg himself. Um, he was a racer back in the 80s and the 90s. And he is the first American to win the Tour de France, amongst a lot of other European um, race, races as well. Well, what's, what makes him more unique than a lot of other um, racers out there, well, until Greg LeMond came around, Americans really didn't have a huge presence of uh, racing or ranking racers in the European race circuit. So he was one of the first to you know, accomplish that, which is great for him. And that progressed to him, you know, which most great racers like Eddie Burks and a few others, they developed their own bike lines. Um, which is great, you know, they take the name of market, some are really hands-on, some are not. Um, Le Mans, he was pretty hands-on, to my knowledge, um, because his geometries are quite a little bit different than the standard norm at the time, and he was really into steel frames, or was producing a lot of steel frames. So when we got to around the mid-90s, where Trek was doing their big power play of buying a whole bunch of companies like Gary Fisher, Bontrager, uh, Ralph Wheels, um, Klein, and Le Mans as well, all in that same time frame. Um, my parents and I, we had, you know, Parker Bikes in the 90s, and we were a Trek dealer at the time, and when they bought these other lines, we picked up um, Klein and uh, Bontrager. And uh, then their idea, Trek Corporate, was to have our competition carry the other subset so our competition down the street destination cyclery which was turned into turn and now they're no longer in business unfortunately um as well as our shop but uh back to them they carried gary fisher and lamont so you know at first i was like oh bittersweet uh, i'm not liking that line but once I moved up to uh, Fort Collins and worked at Lee Cyclery, we carried Le Mans as well as Specialized. So those two other brands that I was competing against all these years, over a good decade, now I worked in the shop that I had them and got to learn the ins and outs and woes, benefits, and actually hands-on, which was really cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, so in that perspective, that's where I kind of fell in love with Le Mans is when I was working at Lee Cyclery. And that's where I've actually picked up a Le Mans myself um, back in the day, which was the Pop Rod Cyclocross. And I was always into, into cyclocross bikes. So I've had a Trek cyclocross bike. I've had um, like, you know, even a Fuji cyclocross bike, which was decent. And the cyclocrosses back in the day, they didn't have very many different models to choose from. So that's where I got really into it. But fast forward to today, um, I'm seeing these Lomanza come out, or like back in the you know, late 90s, early 2000s, mid 2000s. There were some awesome bikes. Um, they did some really cool things, especially after uh, Truck purchased them. And you know, Le Mans himself is probably has a bittersweet problem there. And I'll go with that in a little bit. But um, right before his heyday, when Truck had the Le Mans line, and there's actually were producing them. Majority of them were being produced in the United States in uh, uh, Waterloo, Wisconsin, where the Trek facility was. That's where they were, they were trying to, Trek was doing a good solid of trying to make a good portion of their bikes in the United States. And, uh, you know, that was great for them. Um, and they were really competing for the longest time. And all of a sudden, in about 2007, 2008, they just kind of had to throw in the towel and start producing bikes or having all their bikes produced overseas. But prior to that, Le Mans bikes were being made in um, you know Waterloo, Wisconsin, and so this particular one we're looking at right here that I'm working on, I get the pleasure to work on because these are really cool. It is called a spline bike. Um, a spline bike is the carbon top with the 
the really popular 853 Reynolds Pro Molly tubing, which is lightweight and stiff, um, stiffer than Pro Molly's, um, but you still have like that um, give as the feel of steel, if you will, uh, with the, you know, the carbon fork. So you got the combination of the Trex OCLD, um, Optimum compact, low void carbon, the 120 model, um, carbon piece, and these are when they were gussing them together still, before they started making them as a layered. Um, and then they bonded them into the steel frame here. So you kind of got the best of both worlds in a weird way of the feel of steel, but you get the lightweight of the carbon fiber and the feel of absorption of the carbon fiber as well, which still does, still does that as well. But going back to the actual Oman and the bike line, um, he was really, you know, progressive in the sense of making some really, really cool road bikes. And he was just a road bike company. That's all he did uh, with road bikes. He didn't venture off of doing mountain bikes or whatever. It was all primarily road bikes. Um, I could be wrong there, but most of the bikes that I've seen and when I was actually working in the bike shops that were carrying them when they were new at the time, they were, um, yeah, they were all pretty much road bikes. So. And you went back to the days when they did all the purchasing, so you'd have a Le Mans road bike line, and then you'd carry Gary Fisher, because that'd be the mountain bike side of it. So between the two, you'd have one, one bike line. Um, so that's kind of how it all pieced together, which was kind of funky, because you'd have the same sales rep, which we did, um, that you know, rep the Von Trager bikes when they made them back then, which we had a, I had a video of an earlier one with a road bike, um, Le Mans and Gary Fisher and also Klein. So he, you know, actually not Gary Fisher, that was a totally separate rep, but he did like the three. So he'd go in our shop then go right down the street and go to our competition shop and hang out with them too. So, uh, you yeah, know, talking about a little bit of awkwardness and, you know, back in the nineties where bike shops were, you know, at least ours too with the competition was pretty bitter. I mean, it was like one of those things, um, you know, back to you know, today, 20 years, 30 years later, yeah. You know, you kind of forget about those, and you're like, yeah, you know, um, maybe I shouldn't have been so competitive, maybe they shouldn't have been, I don't know. Um, nowadays, we're just, uh, hopefully, the bike shop community is like, we're all just trying to survive and find our niche, because um, the big companies are starting to take over, where Trek and Specializers, you know, taking up a lot of big of the market share as well as Giant. So, so that's where we're, where we're coming, coming to that, ahead to the, current situation with bikes but what's really cool about these is well number one there's not that many of them so they're kind of a uniqueness factor to them um, they have an awesome ride i got a chance to ride one for about i had one of my size this one's my size i might ride it for a little while too just to get the feel of it um they you know they just ride great they just have a good solid feel to them um a lot of fun and it's one of those things where you're not gonna see that in the new bikes of today. New bikes, you know, they all have they're all their flavors and you know, lighter weight or better componentry or what have you. Uh, but this the bike came with uh, Altrager 105, which is your second to third level down of componentry back in the day. So it was really up there uh, as in quality. And uh, you know, came with the Bontrager wheels. Um, this one has pretty close to spec on it. So it's pretty, pretty slick. Um, and it didn't have like a horrible lot of use. It was, it, was, it was well maintained over the years, that kind of thing. I think the only thing we're gonna have to change out on this bike as big as the tires and the chain. Well, maybe not even the chain, just the tires, bar tape, and pedals. Um, but other than that, it should, be, it should be in really good shape. So, you know, back to the Le Mans story. Unfortunately, back in uh, 2007-ish, um, he had a little uh, argument with the Trek Corp with um, saying things about our uh, boy Lance Armstrong and you know saying that he was doping. Um, well, you know, it turns out he was, but they were backing, Trek was backing them at the time, totally cut the line. So unfortunately, Le Mans stopped production, I think in 2008 or 2009 was the last run they've seen on the market until currently. Um, Le Mans himself is, made up of, you know, they're building bikes again, I think somewhere in Mississippi or somewhere in the south. And um, they started off with more of the uh, electric assist hybrids, that kind of thing, you know, the more popular models. And they're you know, building up some steam. Not really sure where they're gonna go with the line at this point, but you know, he's back out there. Good for him, that's great, that's awesome um, to get back on the marketplace. But you know, here I am taking a look at the classics. 
Um, trying to bring them, you know, many, as many of them back to, to the market with, you know, fine tuned, ready to go and get some more, plenty of life in these, um, road bikes and an excellent ride. Um, if you're an avid cyclist and you do have a lot of different bikes in your staple, I really recommend just trying one of these out, um, seeing how they feel, even if it's a full steel frame versus the, the carbon split and the last gen generation that they had was a full carbon, which was nice. I rode one of those, very supple. Um, the geometry feels a little bit different, so you'll either you'll like it or fit you like me. It fits really well. It really hugs the road well for me. Um, but you know, with all bikes, they, that's what the, that's what only makes the difference between the manufacturers is the frame. Um, you know, maybe a little bit on the fork, but other than that, a lot of it's just the same old apples. So, um, so that's where you got. Um, yeah, Le Mans, they're, they're pretty sweet, and this particular one pretty cool which I got a couple in stock and I've sold several over the last couple of years and pretty much every one I've, I've sold to have, have really enjoyed it and uh, it's just uh, one of those unique things in the industry that you know what is it uh, the, well now you know with the Oman with the spline you can read up on it there's some uh, verbiage still out there in the internet world to read up on it and it's a pretty cool concept at the time um, but yeah I remember when these were new coming off the showroom floor it was pretty slick uh, but yeah, you know, so if you ever get a chance to ride one for a little bit of time, yeah, this is definitely to add to your staple if you already have one. So if not, it's a great starter bike. Um, you know, it has a little bit of comfort to it that I would say it has a little bit more of a higher end, um, a vibe as well. So it will last you a little bit longer. So you're not at the low, low end entry level. You're at more of a mid range. So you can ride this for several seasons before you realize or not realize, but feel the itch of getting something new or something different so anyway this is pretty awesome but thanks for sharing some time with me and I hope you learned a little bit and shared my passion about the little mob bikes thanks again see you next time